In this tutorial, we're going to be using these fingerprint alphas to generate a seamless fingerprint texture that you can use for any material, whatever. And instead of making you generate your own fingerprints, I got you, okay? Go over to my Gumroad link in the description. Uh, you can download five free fingerprint alphas. You could just type in zero for the price, or you could give me uh, a value that is bigger than that. But either way, uh, download these, make your own, whatever you want to do. And then we're going to head over to Blender, where we are going to scatter them, turn them into a seamless texture. Here's how we do that. Uh, go to geometry nodes, delete the cube, and then add in a, a new cube since we don't want to use the default cube. Actually, my brain froze. I'm like, why did I delete the cube? I needed that. Uh, either way, take the cube, make it geo nodes, and replace it with a grid. The idea is we're going to scatter a bunch of points here, and for each point, we're going to give a fingerprint, and we can select from one of the five images, rotate, uh, add some transparency, stuff like that. So I'm going to make this point a bit bigger, and we are going to distribute points on its faces. Again, every point is going to be a fingerprint. Um, if you want it so that you can't have two overlapping, then set this to Poisson disk and increase the minimum distance, and that will fix that. Um, in this case, if you think about it, you can have two fingerprints on top of each other. So I'm going to keep it at a random. For each of these, we want to have a grid. So I'm going to instance on points. And for the instance, we're going to use a grid. So you want to think of these uh, grids as basically little panels or cards that we're going to stick texture onto. Of course, we want to uh, randomize these. So uh, for the scale, we can do a randomization. So I'm just kind of uh, distributing it like this instead of in the shader editor because this will make overlap easier and we don't have to use Voronoi and all this. I'm going to randomize it from a size of 0.5 to 1 and we should have less of these. 0.5 to 1 so some of them are half the size of others and some of them will be in between and with a different random value seed we are going to affect the rotation. So I'm going to combine XYZ on the Z axis since I want to rotate them based on this uh, Z normal, right? We take this, we rotate it, and now let's increase that. Uh, we have some planes that are bigger, some that are smaller, some that are facing one way, some that are facing another way. And now the question is, how do we um, put fingerprints on this? So make sure you realize your instances so that uh, we can actually apply different stuff to each one and it's not just one plane that's copied all over. And we're going to set material. And really the rest of the magic here is going to be in the material. Okay, so again, we distributed a bunch of these and we want to uh, use this casted material in a uh, useful way. So for the material, which I'm going to call fingerprint, and you can see it's updated over here. Uh, here is what we are going to do. First of all, we need a UV coordinates so that we can paste a uh, image texture or maybe it uses it implicitly. Let's see. So uh, just go to your um, folder where you downloaded them. We'll use one of the fingerprints. Let's see if we try to view it. Uh, it's all black because it doesn't have any coordinates to use. We just instance these uh, random things. Uh, we need a coordinate system. Luckily, if you use an attribute node and you type in exactly like I am, UV underscore map, and then you don't include that square bracket at the end, UV underscore map, uh, this is a implicit attribute uh, that we don't need to define uh, that gives us the UV coordinate. Now, you're going to notice there's a bit of overlap, and by bit, I mean a lot. Uh, so let's uh, actually also fix that. So this is the issue with doing it only in shader nodes. Uh, you're going to have this overlap with the Voronoi texture trick. You're not going to be able to solve it. Uh, so I want to have some planes above, some of them below. In general, I don't want them uh, to intersect. So we can actually just take this rotation random value with its uh, z-coordinate and uh, randomize the position, but not by as much, from 0 to like 0.1. And this will... And we want to uh, set this to offset, not position, um, so that now there's a very low probability of them intersecting. So you could see there's different heights. So again, implicitly UV map is here. If you add an S, it's not going to work. It has to be spelled exactly like this uh, so that we can plug in this to our image texture. And now we have a bunch of these. Again, you're going to see a bit of uh, overlapping because uh, we basically have a black and white image uh, overlapping on top of itself. Uh, we need to give it transparency, long story short. So I'm going to mix shader using the uh, factor, at, using the image as the factor, because it's a black and white image. Uh, the bottom socket, in other words, where it's black, is going to be transparent. And the top socket, there's a couple ways you could do this. I'm just going to use a uh, RGB node. Uh, but you could do some kind of principled BSDF thing. So I'm going to set it to white. Let's view that. And now you can see uh, it's working. Just to reduce the chance of uh, overlap, 
I'm going to undo this. Uh, but notice that we can make our fingerprints any color. Okay, uh, so we have this. Uh, we need to add more variation, though, because it kind of looks like, and we do have the same fingerprint on each one, and we have five of them, and they're all kind of the same magnet strength. Like, they're all, like, equally uh, opaque, uh, so we can solve all that. Uh, basically, the trick we're going to be using is each of these planes is a separate entity. It's on its own island. They're not connected, uh, meaning if we use the random per island thing, and some people tell me to use uh, object info, uh, for some reason. Well, I guess it works with an EV, and then you set this to to random. I don't know. Maybe that's an EV thing. Uh, I just like to use random per island. We'll give us a random number from 0 to 1 for each of these islands. Uh, we can use this for a bunch of stuff. Uh, first of all, first of all, we can multiply it uh, with this image texture, which we're going to modify, but we can multiply it with this image texture, which will give us different strengths, as you can see. So let's see what that looks like. Now, not every single one's going to be the same opacity. By the way, if we make our background black, uh, this will be easier to see. So this is before and after. Definitely adds a bit of variation. And second of all, uh, let's uh, use different fingerprints. And again, this works for any kind of texture bashing thing. I'm just happening to use fingerprints. So with another image texture node using the same coordinate system, let's load in the second fingerprint. And by the way, uh, you can download five of these for free. I've made 15. They're available on Patreon if you want all 15 uh, for just five bucks. But um, you can see if we now swap it with this other image texture, we get the same deal, but now we have a different fingerprint. And what we want is kind of a mixture of both of them. So I'm going to mix these together. And I want to say, uh, mix them with a factor depending on this random uh, per island. But don't just, you know, connect them here so that there's kind of both of them and they're overlapping. Uh, what I would recommend is saying, have one or the other. So I'm going to take these and filter them by which ones are bigger and which ones are less than 0.5. This way, uh, half of these have this fingerprint with this gap over here. Let me show that with this, like, gap. And the other ones have uh, more of this kind of fingerprint. And when we view it, uh, when we disable overlays, it looks much more chaotic. Let's add uh, one or two more fingerprints just to really add variation here. Although, again, there are 15 in the pack. Uh, let's add in a third one, another image texture. This one's set to, I don't know, I like number 15, for example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to mix it. And uh, we need to have a, again, a randomizer selection function. Uh, so for the first one, we say which ones are greater than a third, since now we have three options. And for the second one, we say which ones are bigger than two-thirds, and we connect that to the second factor. If you had four, it'd be one-fourth, two-fourths, and three-fourths, etc. Uh, but you can see now we have three different kinds. So before, we had the same one every time. Now we have half and half. And now we have a 33% distribution. And uh, again, the shader nodes is what's picking which fingerprint is showing up and the opacity. The geometry nodes is what is affecting the distribution. So boom, just like that, we have a uh, new uh, textures and all this. And uh, we can make them separate or like overlapping or whatever we want. Additionally, uh, we have the rotation controls. Uh, which we can do seeds for, and also uh, scale. Some of them can be big, some of them can be small, different seeds, uh, stuff like that. So once you're uh, happy with this, I guess kind of the final thing is you want to take this thing that we created and turn it into a seamless texture. In other words, render it out. Uh, so I'm going to put our camera above on the z-axis, just like that. Uh, we've set this up to be distributed on a square grid. So I'm going to do a thousand by a thousand render, zoom in until all the fingerprints are barely contained in the frame, something like that. Of course, you want to distribute many more to get this to have like a more seamless look. Uh, but take this and uh, we want to render it and then we can make a material. So let's render this out. It will take just a second and we're going to call this thing on the desktop. Let's call it fingerprint for material available <laughs> on Patreon. Link in the description. So we're going to save this out, and now let's uh, turn this into a nice uh, usable material. So for this scene, 
I'm just going to set something up. This works with anything with a, a coordinate system. Uh, so to keep it simple, I'm going to have a sphere lit by an HDRI environment, and we're going to turn it into like glass or something like that uh, so that we can see the fingerprints. So I'm going to hide the background and then make it a cycles, but it works in cycles and DV. In the shading workspace, we are going to create, so I'm just doing this super fast, uh, we're going to create a glass material by bringing down the roughness and bringing up the transmission. And for the roughness, we want our fingerprints to contribute. So some of the roughness is a bit smudgier. So we now import in our fingerprints, which uh, you can see are now seamless and they work on our mesh. And you can have as many of these as you want at any kind of scaling. You take this, you connect it to the roughness. And you can see it's kind of a clear glass, except for some areas where we have these uh, surface imperfections. And I would recommend uh, for fingerprints, since they're kind of like fine details, uh, play around with these. Maybe set it to cubic, maybe set it to closest. It's up to you. But you can see we've kind of disrupted the surface of this with a bit more uh, detail. Uh, so that is how you take a bunch of images, whether they be fingerprints, handprints, whatever, and you kind of bash them together. And again, you can uh, download uh, five of these for free. Anyways, uh, let's wrap up this uh, tutorial. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching till the end. Again, I've said it a bunch of times, five free image textures on Gumroad, 15 on the Patreon for uh, the project file tier. And uh, speaking of the Patreon, at the end of these uh, tutorials, I like to promote the ever living, probably shouldn't take out a pocket knife on the YouTube video, uh, <laughs> the ever living plastic capsule out of my Patreon. Uh, yes, there's Patreon. There's uh, three tiers and reasons you should join. First of all, uh, you get early access to tutorials, so you can see tutorials early on the CG Matter and Default Cube channel. Second of all, project files. I've talked about this a bunch uh, in this video, but you get access to anything I've uploaded since 2019 for just $5. And thirdly, exclusive tutorials. I made two this month, and there's a catalog going back a couple months. Uh, tutorials available only for patrons. But in general, if you like what I do here on CG Matter and Default Cube and you want it to be available for free for everybody forever, uh, that is the best way to support what I do. And I appreciate even a dollar. Everything is super valuable. Thank you guys for watching till the end. And uh, hopefully you find these uh, fingerprint stuff useful. See ya.